We were talking yesterday, like around 4.30, 4.45 Eastern time. And I said, I feel like, I feel like Kyrie is jealous of LeBron. You I feel like there's that. some jealousy there. And then I see a story posted around 7.45, 8 p.m., where LeBron miraculously is talking about jealousy and, how, and the reason it works with Anthony Davis is they're not jealous of one another. Now, let, listen, to, here, we have the sound. Listen to what LeBron says about Anthony Davis. We're not jealous of each other. I think that's the, the best thing. In professional sports, you have guys that join forces Two, you know, call them alpha males. That's what they call them. Two guys that's been dominant in a specific sport on their own respective teams. And they get together and they talk about, okay, how dominant they can be. And they talk about this is going to be this and that. Um, I believe jealousy creeps in a lot. And uh, that is the absolute contrary of what we are. We know who we are. We know what we're about, and we want the best, seriously, every single day, both on and off the floor for one another. We're just not, we're not jealous of one another. And I think that you align that with respect. I don't think, the, um, I think the sky's the limit. All that jealousy and right. envy coming from my enemies. Okay, Sorry. listen to this, listen to this, Mike. Yeah. LeBron James leaves Cleveland. The, the community is devastated. Not just the franchise. The community is devastated. How could he do it? They hated him. He goes to Miami. They go to the NBA Finals. The Cavaliers go to the lottery. Uh, they get the number one pick in the draft. Who do they draft? Kyrie Irving. First pick in the draft, Kyrie Irving. And they struggle a, a while with Kyrie as their leader. And just when they think they're about to turn some things around, they get the number one pick again. Kyrie signs a new contract with Cleveland. He's going to be the guy. What happens? LeBron comes back. The savior comes back. And when you play with LeBron, if you're Anthony Davis, you're okay with it. You're okay with the, the, the narrative that this is LeBron's team. This is LeBron's championship. He makes everybody better. He's one of the greatest players of all time. You have to get used to it. If you're okay with that, yeah, that's good. If you're not okay with that, you say, wait a minute. We win a championship. I don't get credit for it. We struggle. He didn't always get the blame for it. It's my, his teammates didn't do enough. We win in game seven against the 73 and nine Golden State Warriors. LeBron brings a championship to Cleveland. Who hit the shot in game seven? It was me. It was me. Why don't I get my love? I want to get out of here. And the truth is, David Griffin has said this. When they won the championship, right after winning the championship, he has to be traded. And they didn't trade him then. And then the next year, he has to be traded. They traded him to Boston. I think there's a little jealousy, a little resentment there. And I think that's what LeBron is talking two, about. I think, I, think, I, I, I think there's a distinction between those two terms. You do? I think there's a distinction between, between jealousy and resentment. Yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I, no, think jealousy. Right. I think it's probably both. Yeah. I think it's the, more the latter, if anything. Um, okay, let's go chronological. Well, I'll, I'll, address, I'll, I'll address Kyrie and Cleveland first, and I want to ask you about what LeBron said yesterday. So let's go chronological. Um, I'm not certain that Kyrie, if I could play armchair psychologist, I'm not so certain that Kyrie was as much jealous of LeBron as in he wanted what LeBron had uh, as he has an That's inflated opinion. I think there's a difference. I think if, if Kyrie, if Kyrie thinks he's that guy, but he couldn't yeah. be that guy alongside LeBron or couldn't be recognized as that guy alongside LeBron, if he wanted to be, he wanted his own team. He wanted to, he wanted to be the face of a franchise. Not that he didn't want LeBron or he wanted what LeBron had. See, it's almost like there can only be one. It's like, no, there can be more than one, but just not here. This town and this team ain't big enough for the two of us. That's not a jealousy thing. That's more of a like, hey, I want mine. You know, like, I want to be the leader. I'm ready to, to evolve and grow and be the face of a franchise, or so I think, but that can never happen so long as I'm subjected to being in LeBron's shadow. I'm not sure that that's okay. exactly jealousy as much as it is an inflated opinion of his own abilities to carry a franchise. 
you know, because he can't be, right. he can't be LeBron. He can't have what LeBron has. He can't be a son of Akron. He can't be 6'8 and 260. Like, I think Kyrie thinks he's as good as anybody and therefore doesn't want to take a back seat to LeBron. So it's more of a, I think he might have been competitive with LeBron, but I don't know if he was jealous as in, I want what he has. And I'm gonna figure well, out a way to undermine him to take it. I don't know. Does that? Well, you can't undermine. I think him. there's a slight difference. There. Yeah, I got you. I, I, I got you. You can't undermine him. But you know, it, it is beyond basketball because you, you heard what he said. You know, the art. It's, it's about the love and the art. So I think he sees himself as, as more than a basketball player. As, and it's funny when he talks about entertainment. He have a movie, doesn't he? Didn't he have a movie out? Yeah. Kyrie, didn't he have a movie. Uncle Drew. I told you. Yeah, I told you he was all. Yeah, like, I mean, there's nobody's brand. Before he got hurt, and even before the Boston, you know, disaster, like, right. nobody's brand was, was, was hotter than Kyrie Irving's. I mean, he had the second, got that, the second best-selling shoe of any player after LeBron. Got that great commercial, got that great commercial with Questlove, killing it on the drums, and then Kyrie yeah. dribbling. I mean, you know, he's, he's got a lot of things going for him, but LeBron has more. Sure. LeBron has more. So... Yeah, he's Perfect. got a he's got a, a you know great shoe deal. Uh, LeBron has a better one. Uh, he's got a movie. LeBron has other ones. Uh, LeBron has uh, he's he's a media mogul. He's got a lot happening. He's got a school. LeBron is that person who is beyond, who is not just a basketball player. And here's another story out just the other day. Uh, we should have talked about it yesterday, but didn't get to it. But just how the volunteers. With, with LeBron and voting, as we deal with voter suppression, a very real thing, it is 2020, uh, not 1962. But there, there is re it's a real story about voter suppression in the United States, and LeBron is a part of that too. Well, and so, so Kyrie, yeah, I think, maybe not that, but, but but Kyrie's got his own voice and 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 the movement for not like for that, not like LeBron. But but let me but let me I know we we up against the break and we got company on the other side of it. So give me a second. Break. Um, you know, break. I want to go. I want to go back to something you said. We're in the living room. You, said, you, got, you take a break in your living room? It's a break. I was talking to Courtney. I wasn't really talking to you. And not even the audience. Was, you know what I was doing. Um, what I was saying was, um, oh, you said LeBron miraculously brought up the idea of jealousy. And I felt like there was some sarcasm there. As in, do you think... And maybe I'm reading too much into what you just said, but do you do you think not, it was? You and it. you even told LeBron's intentional comments. You think he was responding to Kyrie in a? Yes. No. No. Yes. Okay. Why? Why yes. would you? Why would LeBron be think, thinking about or Kyrie Irving? If he's not, if he's not responding to Kyrie because he was asked, are you aware of Kyrie's comments about uh, Kyrie's comments about hey the uh, this is the first time in my career, I can I can go to somebody who's not the best option like I am. He said I'm aware, and then he left it there. So uh -huh. he's aware of the comments. But even if he's not talking about Kyrie. Okay. He's talking about somebody. He said, I think jealousy creeps in. What's he? Is it just, just a random comment? Or is that based I think on it, I, I think it might be. I think, it, what, I, th I think both. Okay, I, take, I think it's both. I think he is recognizing through experience, his own experience with Kyrie, who... So I, I would say the in terms of star power, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Shaq, who was obviously old, um, mm -hmm. And knew that it wasn't that that wasn't his team. D Wade, who the big moment in the Miami the Heatles run was D Wade saying, "Hey, it's yours. This is your team. Right. We got to follow you." So that was one experience. The juxtaposition of that seems to have been Kyrie Irving and having to compete for you know uh, the crown in Cleveland, so to speak. Or, or you think Kyrie was jealous of him? So now you got Anthony Davis. So not to not to mention he's a very astute. Uh, student of history uh, and also an observer of the NBA and, and sports across the board. And, and, and honestly, just if I could kind of go back to, and I'm not going to give a, another sermon right now, but I just want to go back to like almost like yesterday when I was inspired by him talking about his experience against the Mavericks in 2011, what that's done for him, that, that spoke to me. What he said yesterday spoke to me. Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's real leadership. And it's a and, and people forget that the the key word in teamwork is work, you know. Like we all have egos to some extent, but you gotta work to to suppress that ego and push it aside for the greater good. And the thing that I enjoy, and I'll say it right here, right now, the thing I enjoy about this partnership 
and some of the other partnerships I've had in my life is I try to surround myself. Hell, even, the, you know, Dwayne, I'm, I'm co-founding a company with right now, uh, Inflection Point Entertainment. Yeah, it's, I, I, I like having partners who, and I've had partners, and I feel the same way, who I am as invested in them and, as, and I'm as interested in their success more so in some cases, but definitely as much as I am my own, you know, uh, and, and vice versa. You know, I, I think too often just in our business, TV people like just, oh, you know, he's a star, he's a star, let's go ahead and put him on TV, they'll be great. And it goes up in flames, you know, because a lot of times they're competing with each other. You and I are not competing for airtime. You know, you said this at the very beginning of our negotiation, we'll pull the curtain all the way back. You said this at the very beginning of our negotiation no with NBC. No curtain. Like there was no competition for you when it came to me and my contract negotiations or anything like that. And so I, I hope people listen to that and, and understand that LeBron was literally giving a leadership lesson, you know, because for Anthony Davis, I, yeah, obviously they go way back. They've known each other for a long time. But for Anthony Davis, he's like, you know, somebody he's helped raise. And obviously Anthony Davis is, uh, you know, who kind of been at LeBron's hip, if you will, with, with, with Uninterrupted and just... They, are, they, they have a relationship that goes beyond just when he came to the Lakers. They, they known him since he went yeah. to his basketball camp. But LeBron, at this point in his career, even though he still considers himself the MVP, because we know he's upset because, you know, only got 16 first-place votes, he's also right. perhaps the more. most unselfish. You know, we compare him to Jordan a lot. I mean, it might be... There's a lot of Russell there, too. There's a lot of Russell there, too, when it comes to, like, winning... He's almost right. robotic. He's almost unselfish to a fault early in his career. He's, almost, he's probably the most unselfish megastar, supernova that, that we've ever seen in terms of he wants, whether it's on or off the court, he wants to see his friends flourish as much, if not more, than he does. That went longer than I wanted. I apologize. I, I know. had to get that off my chest. <laughs>